Welcome back to Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life. We're here talking about your inner life, our inner life, and the work of uh, being present to all that arises in you, around you, and what, Laurel? What else? In you, around you, and for you. For you. For you. I said repeatedly because that's our topic today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a great month here where we're focusing on life lessons and messengers. Last week, we were digging into, do you remember, Laurel, what we talked about last week? No, go ahead and tell me, remind me. Oh my gosh, we had such a great conversation. We were talking about, we had this great question for everybody. I'm going to repeat it this week in case you missed last week, because you really want to go back. This one was a good one, right? So how can somebody you struggle with be your teacher? Yes, that conversation, yeah. all of it was so good. Well, it's so transformative to um, usually somebody we struggle with, we want them out of our lives. We want to judge them. We want to put them in a little place that's like, you know, a dungeon almost really, right? And so how can you elevate them, right, into a place where they're they're here to help you learn something, right? So if they're your teacher, they're here to help you learn something. The question is, what are you learning? And that's really... I mean, if we can look at all of our inner work that way, this is how the transformation happens, right? Is looking at whatever's going on within you and around you as an opportunity to grow, to learn, to expand, to evolve. And that's where the transformation comes in rather yes. than feeling stuck. Yes. Yeah. And it's so interesting because I, you know, I can say over the years, really, if something comes up again and again for me, mm -hmm. you know, I say for me, right? If it, yeah. if if my same response, my reaction, a situation that reminds me of I've gone through this before, I thought I was done with this. Yeah. It just for me, it reminds me that I still have work to do in this area. That's so great. Yeah. So our topic today is repeating patterns and we're going to hit it from a few different angles. Uh, so uh, Laurel, I, I think the, the thing that was coming up for me first is, um, you know, I mean, we, t we, we hit on it last, we kind of started the conversation last week when we were talking about, you know, if you find you're in a relationship that seems the same, you know, you're doing the same thing, saying the same things, you're showing up the same way, it's not working out, but it's just a different person, right? That's like a repeating pattern. It feels like a repeating pattern. And you were, you were nice enough to like, get into like a work, like how you, how you had that show up as, you know, bosses in work. Yes. Right? Yeah. So Can I Can we like, talk for one yeah. second about though, the repeated, the repeated behavior, right? So I could, all of us, each of us could have someone, you know, the messenger that shows up bringing the same message mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. But it's really interesting because when we stop and think about our own contribution to that repeating situation, right? Right. Like it just makes me wonder if it's our repeating the solution, the way we deal with something right. that, that influences and affects the other and creates the situation, right? Like it yeah. takes you to tango, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And we want to believe that it does. I mean, we want to absolutely believe that it does. So um, let's take one um, that's like not work related. And that would be maybe you always feel like you end up in friendships where you're the one who um, is always taking care of the other person. Let's, let's do that one for an example, right? So, uh, if that were to be the case, right, uh, and you're tired of it, that's your repeating pattern. I'm in these friendships and all I ever do is I feel like I'm taking care of everybody, you know? You go, okay, well, if you're going to change that repeat, if you don't, number one, any repeating pattern, right, and is usually is something that, about it that we don't like, <laughs> right? So you could have a repeating pattern that's great and you, you want to continue it because it's working out wonderfully for you, right? So these are the repeating patterns where you don't feel good inside yourself. You don't feel like you're, you're showing up the way you want to. It's not providing you the quality of life or the quality of relationships you're looking for. So we want to figure out how to change the repeat, how to change the pattern 
so that we're not stuck in this place where we're doing it again and again. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I was as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, when we try to change and grow, like, okay, I'm gonna give the example of the the recovering people pleaser, right? Yeah. You know, it was five years ago or more, I made a decision. I was no longer going to play the role of a of a people pleaser. Yep. And so as I show up in situations, right, if I let my autopilot, you know, my past behavior, oh, and part of that is my nervous system, oh, I know in this situation, in the past, I did this and it worked, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to be really careful of how I let the past influence my present behavior if I want to change Right. And so it is that deliberate, intentional thing of recognizing when your old patterns and behavior are going to come out loud and clear. And it would be easy to just fall back into that repeating pattern. Right. And I, I'm i glad you kind of nutted out to this idea of your nervous system playing into it. Right. I think that as you start to do, I, I think think of your repeating pattern as what you're going to do is you're going to take that pattern and you're going to start to deconstruct it into its some elements, right? So you can start to tease out almost how the pattern you know, works, right? So if you, if you think about a pattern in a material, right, it's the same thing over and over. The threads are happening the same thing again and again and again, right? And if you tease all those, if you pull a thread out, the pattern all of a sudden is going to look a little different. If you pull a bunch of threads out, they're all... All of a sudden, it might not even be the recognizable pattern anymore. It might be something else. So what we're doing is we're deconstructing so that we literally are taking out, right, a thread, which is a behavior, a thing that we're doing again and again that causes the situation to continue to look the same over and over again. Yeah. And in that deconstruction process, what happens is you get to start to figure out how how you're going to do it and how to gain some control over it. We are in repeating patterns all the time. If we weren't, life would be going on really slowly, really clumsily. You know, we have to have repeating patterns because we if we had to c consciously make a decision, oh my God, I'm going to pick up my water to take a drink, but I can't remember how to grab the glass, right? I mean, it would take me all day just to take a drink of water. So. Right. So we are in repeating patterns and we want to see literally um, when we do this work, that that's what it's like. It's like, it's like you're going to start a friendship and if you're not careful, you're just going to do the same thing again. And so it's like picking up the glass, you know, next time, what are you going to do? Are you going to grab with your whole hand? Are you going to just do two fingers? Like you have to change it, right? Otherwise you get the same result. Yes. Yeah. And I think about, as you were talking, what was coming to mind for me was, you know, think about an actor who, no matter what the movie is, they play the same character. Yeah. And I don't mean the same name. I mean, the same, you know, archetype yeah. of the character. And and fifth movie in, you're like, I don't even want to watch this actor because they always play the same character. Yeah. Right? And that's what I think about us, right? Yeah. We play the same character. Yeah. 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 Again and, and again. And when we don't want to, we have to be very careful about how we go, how we move forward in life. Yeah. And, and oftentimes it's like that. I mean, if you want to talk, it's speak in archetypes and in, in our situation, right. In our example that we're going to use today as our deconstruction is, all right, you're showing up as the rescuer, right? You're always the person taking care of the other person. Think of yourself as the rescuer or the caregiver, right? And so now if you want to no longer repeat that pattern in your friendships, how are you going to no longer be the caregiver or the rescuer? And what are you going to be instead? Yes. That's the tricky part, isn't it, Laurel? Because it we have to. Is. Yeah. But it's also the part where, um, in order for the transformation to take place, usually we have to grow some aspect of ourselves, right? Or put ourselves in uncomfortable a role for a little bit because we're not we're not used to the role. We don't know the lines. We don't know what to say. We don't know um, how to do it well yet, you know? So it's going to take some learning and growing. Yeah. yeah. And patience. I have a great example um, a client who realized in the last several months that she is an overfunctioner. 
mm-hmm. right? She is the one who jumps in and takes care of everything. Yeah. Whether it's a weekend away with her friends or whether it's a project at work that someone else let slip. She she recognizes this now about herself, that her overfunctioning is creating maybe overwhelm, maybe too much to do, maybe too many responsibilities. And what she's seeing as she deliberately, intentionally stops jumping in to take over, to overfunction, that her world is filled with underfunctioners. Yeah. And it's so interesting because our conversations are when you, when I am an overfunctioner, I attract underfunctioners. When I am the rescuer, I attract people who need to be rescued, right? Okay. It's just, well, I'll call it Murphy's Law, right? Yeah. Um, who would I be if I didn't have people to rescue? If I was a rescuer, I need to find those people. Right. Um, and so when we try to change, when we don't want to play that that role, that character, it really feels wobbly because our relationships, our way of being, our comfort level, right? Our our autopilot life, all of it is moving and, and reorganizing. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, it really is. And I think, you know, to make a dedication to yourself that you'll do it differently, um, it requires some real courage, you know, to to to, to do that because of the, all that autopilot and the 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 maybe recognition that you get for the way that you've been doing it or whatever the side benefits are that that have been happening for you it's like how do you put all that down and say wait a minute i just want to do this differently and see what happens yes. and um and you're going to have to spend a little time like thinking that out like i think about you know the steps i took along the way right to to get out of my over functioning role or my people pleasing role or whatever you know it was um you know, just taking one step at a time and building on that, right? So that's like the deconstruction is like, okay, what, what do I, I always step in and help. Okay, what if I just stood there for a minute and said, wow, it looks like, looks like you're in a mess right here. You know, what, what are you going to do? You know, do you have a plan to deal with all this? I don't know. You know, like, how do you just start to do it differently. Don't step in and just do it, right? If you're the over-functioner, ooh, and that in and right. of itself is huge, right? You're already it dealing is. with your nervous system and the that that momentum of always doing the same thing. And how do you just like stay steady, stay still? You yeah. Know? And two things that yeah. that you said before. What are you going to do instead, right? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I would think, and this this is what was coming up for me, if. And I have been an overfunctioner in the past, and I probably still am in some relationships, right? Mm-hmm. But what am I going to do instead? Yeah, I'm. My role is going to be a patient observer, because mm-hmm. if I don't replace the role of overfunctioner, yeah. I don't want to be the underfunctioner because I, I. That's not who I want to be. Yeah, but I have to be a patient observer. So I think that's a really important, maybe even journal prompt for our listeners. Yeah. What roles do you want to give up? Who do you no longer want to be, right? What mm-hmm. patterns are you ready to say goodbye to? And yeah. what are you going to do instead? Yeah. yeah. Right? And then the other thing that was coming up really big for me when you were talking was, I just lost it. Mm. Um, you so, know, I was, yeah, I know because, go ahead, it's, jump in if you get it. Okay. Jump in if you get it, because I was going back to, you know, uh, just following that thread of conversation, which is to to know that uh, you're willing to do it differently and then to have a plan of what you're going to do differently. And literally, you know, you gave those journaling prompts, literally, if you're going to no longer be the rescuer and you're going to be the patient observer, right? what is it you're going to say? You have to come up with literally questions or patent, you know, lines. Write your script, right? (laughs) Write the script a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's okay to do that. I think it's necessary, quite frankly. Yeah. And this ties in exactly what, what was coming up before is, um, is 
I just lost it again. Oh my gosh, Laurel. Why Ooh, is it's gotta it be coming? a good one? It's fleeting. Why is it I love not those coming fleeting, out? Those fleeting, fleeting things. <laughs> I um whenever it's fleeting, it's like uh here it is. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Here it is. How is it serving you? The repeated pattern or the role that you play, yeah, right? Habitually, right? Yeah. How is it serving you? Because I think in order to show up differently, we have to know how is that past behavior serving us and how can we fill that need in a healthier way, right? Yeah, yeah that's great. That's so great. So this is a thing I think about a people pleaser, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be helpful. If I am, if I'm looking for healthy ways to be a helper, I might volunteer at the community kitchen. Yeah. Right. I might volunteer with the women's garden committee. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I need to fill that need to be helping, to be a helper. Yeah. In a healthy way. So it doesn't show up in a people pleasing way that I'm doing for belonging and recognition. Right. Yeah. And also, you know, so for instance, in our example here, right. If you're, if you're, if you really love being the helper and the rescuer, you might as well get paid for it or do it as a volunteer activity. If you're getting that part of you fulfilled, then you don't have to be that in your friendships, right? But if yes. you don't get that part of yourself fulfilled and it's a high area for you as a as as a way of how you want to develop yourself or express yourself, then you do have to find a place where you can self-express in that way, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's so really good. It's really interesting. And it reminds me of um, a workshop I did this weekend and and talking about triggers, right? Mm -hmm. Things that trigger us. And it's often past behaviors that come forward when we're in a situation that we have a strong response to. I like to think of it as big energy comes through, right? Mm -hmm. When I'm in a certain situation. And understanding... And I don't, I'm not one who likes to think about the past and really when, you know, why is this showing up and why am I like this and all of that, but it's playing it, seeing how many times I've played that role in the past mm -hmm. and, and threading that, you know, that cord, if you will, realizing that, oh, this is something I've done for many, many, many years I don't know why I'm still doing this, but I know there's something in my, I'll say nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. That I safely navigate situations based on what has worked in the past. And it leads me to be sometimes a person that I no longer want to be, right? Yeah. And so getting, seeing that thread and understanding the risk that may might have existed or I perceived existed 40 or 50 years ago is different today, right? I'm a different person. I'm a stronger person. I'm independent of the people that caused me to act that way in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think so when we're talking about uh, repeated patterns that kind of play into more like the triggered area, Right. So I feel like when we were describing before, it wasn't necessarily a triggered, it was more like a pattern of behavior that you've repeated over and over again. And so it connected with how you, how you do life, so to speak. Right. Sure. Yes. So then there's this whole other layer, right. Of triggered behaviors where you feel stuck in ways of responding and you don't feel like you have control over it necessarily. Right. I think that's true. Yeah. 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 And even, and even don't you, you feel, you know, you feel like you don't have any options on how to deal with the situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, usually we do feel powerless when we're triggered. We usually do feel powerless and we feel stuck, you know? And so um, the nervous system kind of takes over. Right. And whatever you did in the past is your survival uh, go-to behavior, right? And that's usually that fight, flight, freeze, right? Yes. That we've talked fawn. about before. Yep. Yeah, yep. fawn. Um, and so 
then if we're if that's the repeated pattern if we if we can identify that that's where we're at then there's usually work that we have to do by ourselves a little bit and prepare so that the next time we encounter it we start to break down and work with the the tr the actual triggering part and so we'll be put we'll put the link in this show notes here for the the show we did on when you're triggered, right? Yeah, what to do when yeah. you're triggered. Because I feel like that's a different kind of repeating pattern. And what we're focusing on today more is, you know, after you've done your nervous system work and you're no longer stuck in the triggered part, right? But you've identified that you still want to change, then, you know, we're, we're kind of expanding on how to do that work, right? Yeah. And how to own it. Yes. How to own it, really. Yeah. And, you know, let's, talk for a minute about the powerlessness, because one of the things yeah. I was thinking about as you were talking is that even the example of an overfunctioner, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been known to do this in the past. You know, a group weekend away, I jump in, I research the options, I, I give the group options, right? I typically tell them what I think is the best option. Right. So I over function in that way. And I feel like, well, if I don't do it, nobody else will. Right. I feel almost the powerlessness in I have to do this. Well, it's really interesting. So then it's almost the question is, are you leading the group or are you over functioning? <laughs> right. And that, but that's, a, it's like a, it might feel like a, um, I don't know, a uh, question, a uh, rhetorical question almost. I, I think, it? no, it's yeah. a really good question. Yeah. In my experience, it's it's leading if you want to lead. Yeah, right. Right? It, let's just pretend for a minute that there's a, you know, a group of five people who annually get together and you, they rotate. Who's going to pick what they're going to do? Right. That's leading, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the rest of the group steps back and says, we don't have to plan anything because Laurel will do it <laughs> or somebody else. And I, right, right, yeah. right, yeah. right. All of the over functioner will yeah. do it, right? Right. And, you know, it, I think this comes down to it's, am I doing it because I want to, because it's, I'm creating the beautiful life that I want? Or am I doing it because I have stepped into this role and now I can't get out of it? Right? Yeah, right, like, right. You know, so powerless, feeling powerless can come in really big situations with triggers. Yeah. Or it can come in situations that appear to be easy to resolve. Yeah, and, and I think that um, the resolution comes in um, coming back to like, do you want to? You yeah. know, what do you really want here? Right. And if and if you want relationships, you know, if we go back to our original example, if you want a relationship that feels more mutual and somebody's taking care of you on occasion as much as you're taking care of them, then there has to be space for that. And you have to learn how to ask for it. You have to, um, I don't know, be helpless once in a while. I, what does yes. it take, right, to get, to get some help? Um, yes. And so that's an interesting uh, component of what we're talking about here. Yeah. And I love that because you think about the rescuer, right? That's the example we started with, right? Yeah. Like, do you ever, you know, does someone, when we are expected to always play this role and we no longer, you know, somehow we no longer want to play that role or when we decide it's no longer healthy or the, the relationship doesn't feel like there's mutual benefit of being helped or helping, right? Yeah. So I do think that these, you know, I think the intensity or severity or seriousness of the situation may vary. Absolutely. But I think the process of getting yourself out of roles that you no longer want to be in so that you're not repeating past behaviors that you've decided no longer serve you. Yeah. And the that's process the process is probably the same. Yeah. And I think that's the key is like, is the, is the repeated pattern serving you 
right? And if it's not, and it's frustrating you, or you're feeling badly about your life because of how this repeating pattern is going, then yes, it's up to you, right? It's your it's your ball game, so to speak, to change it. And yeah. there's lots of ways to go about it. So hopefully we've given you lots of ideas today on ways to begin to do that. I think um, you know, when we come back to this topic of life lessons and messengers, right? A repeating pattern is a, is often a time. Uh, so I'll go back to, you know, when I said, well, if the pattern's repeating and it's providing you this great life and you're loving what's happening, right? You're probably not going to change your pattern. It's usually that um, something's not going the way you want it to, or you're bored or you're frustrated, or you're ready for a big change in your life, or you're in a new season, or whatever it is, right, that um, is causing you to look at, wow, this pattern is kind of feeling worn out, or yeah, I don't like the way it's going anymore. So then you want to feel like you have some power there to change it. That's ultimately what we're calling you to uh, rise into, so to speak. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. And I do think, you know, it, it might not be a problem, right? Mm -hmm. But we get to decide. And I think that it's a really good, you know, there may be listeners who are like, not even thinking that there's any of their past, or maybe their, their patterns or tendencies or behaviors that are more habitual that are a problem. I mean, I know many people who love habitual behaviors, because it helps them they know what is expected of them. They know the role they play, right? They're not bored. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so I think habitual behaviors can be a really good thing. You know, one, our brain is so busy making so many decisions every day. If we don't have to make decisions, we're freeing up our brain power, right, for other things. Yes. But it really, I think it, you, you'll feel it in your body, I think, is what I want to say to our listeners. You'll feel it in your body when maybe there's some pattern that is no longer serving you that it's making needs you to uncomfortable. Be changed, yeah, it's right? making you uncomfortable in right. some sort of way, right? And uh and so the goal is right from the beginning is just identify what is it that's making you uncomfortable, you know, what is, and then begin to nut out the pattern, you know, go back and look at, listen to the questions that we had here, because I feel like it's really um, the deconstruction of being able to look at, we all live in patterns and habits yes. and routines. Yes. Yes. And so if you can start to deconstruct it, right, then you have the opportunity to start to, like I said, pull a thread, pull a pattern, pull a behavior, right? Don't do it anymore. Think about what your role is. And, um, and you've got this, you can do this. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And let that repeating pattern be your life lesson, your messenger, that some part of you wants to grow and expand in some sort of way. Because if that pattern feels uncomfortable to you, it's usually simply your being going, maybe I've outgrown this in some way what needs to be different. Yeah. What a great, I, I know we have to wrap up soon. I can feel it. But yeah. when I think about the flip side of when we choose, right? What about when we're in a relationship with someone else that has is ready to move on from mm -hmm. a pattern, a way of being? And I'm thinking about, you know, when um, when parents of adult children need to shift and change into a new type of relationship, right? Yeah. That happens a lot. Um, it could happen too when someone is promoted where you used to be peers in the workplace and now, you know, someone is promoted and 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 you work for someone that used to be your peer, right? That has happened to me before. Yeah. Like when we are given the opportunity, no no choice of our own, yeah. right? To change and grow. I think we should probably have a whole nother episode on that, but it's it still requires you to look at what role was I playing? How did it serve me? And how can I fill that need in another way, in a new way of being? Yeah, that's great. Laurel, I'm so glad you, you came here before we closed out the show, because I do think that's a really important piece rather than feeling like 
you don't know what you're going to do now, right? Is just acknowledging that the other person is changing and growing and moving on in some fashion. And, and we want that to be okay, right? Otherwise yeah. we all suffer in, in, in a multitude of ways. So yes. how can we graciously start to look at, okay, now what am I going to do? Given that right. there may be a little bit of a, a hole here or a little sense of emptiness or rejection or whatever, whatever it is, right? To be able to work yes. through it. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. All yeah. right. Wow. Another good episode. Another good episode in the can, so to speak. And we have a couple more episodes here on life lessons and messengers. So stay with us this month because it's a really, um, it's a really important part, I think, of, you know, being able to step into our power and also to see life through a lens where we feel like it's more about opportunity rather than about oh no, what's happening to me rather than, you know, it's happening for you. Yeah. Yes. That's part of that shift. Like Laura yeah. said, when we opened up. Yes. Good. Well, thank All you. Right. I'll see you next week, Laurel, for more beautiful work, beautiful life. Bye. Bye. Thanks for being with us.